This program is about souffle, and while we try to persuade you how simple they are, we'll see along this souffle which stand as they've just been tacked out of the oven. Souffle are one of the easiest things in the world to make, and yet everyone is scared of them. Timing is important, but it's not a big problem. I've served 60 souffle all at once before, which is pretty good. But my friend Peter Kronberg of the... Our friend. Our friend of the uh, Intercontinental Hotel have served 750 souffle. I remember the occasion. We were there. And uh, they were all right. I'm pleased to say we were there as a guest. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, let's see how they stand. I mean, that's quite something. They've been there for over five minutes now. But they're not overcooked, you see, Michel, and I think that's a secret. Yes. Well, there is one thing about souffle. Why don't you give us a few little hints? Few well, little tips. first, souffle do not like change of temperature. So if you find that your, your guests are not quite finished with the hot souffle, take it out of the oven on a bain marie mm. where there is a nice gentle heat. Mm. They will stand for several minutes, Four, if, five they, minutes. if they're not overcooked. Yeah. Well, those if they are, are overcooked, mm. forget it. The more See. you cook them, obviously it's mostly white of eggs. Yes. In fact, so it is. In fact, it's uh, more dangerous to overcook a souffle than undercook it. You could always put it back in the oven yes. if it's tightly overcooked. When it's overcooked, it really sinks it sink. immediately. Immediately. And it's dreadful. It's dry. So it's while this, while this one's been beautifully cooked, we can see that it's holding it's the running. middle. In fact, if we can take the top, look at that. It's been there for five minutes. And it's beautiful. Look, mm -hmm. it's gooey. It's just right in the center. And th that's a raspberry souffle. Yep. Which uh, uh, we've just made out of fresh pure raspberry. Then and which normally serve with a little coolie. You make a little hole in the middle. And, and pour some And coulis. then the souffle rise again. It does. Poop. It does. Lovely. Magic. Uh, generally speaking, if we talk about souffle, uh, the old days, I mean, that was the way. That was the copper. We were beating. It's still good in my book. I like when I make souffle, if it's for a small quantity, I'm talking about referring to two or three white of eggs, I like beating it by hand. As in the, in the whisk, a lot of energy. It's, well, it's hold better. The last thing to do, obviously, is to use aluminium. Never use aluminium when you whisk white of eggs, or then they will di be discolored. They will they become black. gray, yeah. black, which black. is dreadful. And other things, well, mould. Can I have a look at the mould, Albert? As the, the, no, not the mould. The souffle mould. The mould. The mould. The, mold. <laughs> the yeah. souffle mould. Yes. Uh, the better when they are shallow, aren't they? Yep. They cook quicker. They cook much quicker. There is different sizes, obviously. And it's always better to go for smaller and shallow one I than would, larger. I You've got to be more. fairly experimented to go for a large souffle. And the problem when it goes around the table is that everyone's making and I, and its mac. The beauty of a souffle, it doesn't look right. individual souffle, in the plate, it's all around, all around, far all around more much impressive. nicer. So really, that's what it is about. And, and I think they had a little hint, Michel, it's the white of eggs. I think the importance of that, important. we cannot more emphasize it. You can't have a fresh white of eggs. That's very true. You have to have white of eggs which have been frozen, no, no fat in which it, which you've kept. Yes. Your basin on which you whip mm. your white of eggs must be absolutely clean. No fat, nothing. In mm. the white of eggs, there mustn't be any speckle of yolk. Mm -hmm. So you put all the advantage on your side. So the eggs will be nice and stiff. Exactly. Now, and at the very yes. last minute, when yeah. they are nearly ready, then you can add, if it's a salty souffle, a little pinch, pinch of, of salt. salt. That will stiffen them. And if, and if it's a sugary souffle, a spoonful of custard sugar. Mm. And that will bind them back together. Mm. I've noticed that you're doing a nice uh, uh, souffle into the program. Souffle I love it. No, no, you're making a nice one. Oh, I make a make strawberry a, souffle. A, a, a ice, yes, not nice. Ice. <laughs> it will well, not be nice. nice. It will be nice. It will be nice. No, okay. Well, I'm going to move to my bench and make my souffle, a little mandarin souffle. You got your bicycle pump. With my quint You got your bicycle pump. I'm on my way. Have Goodbye. you got your pump? No, I've got all what I need. Uh, this souffle is called mandarin and cointreau souffle, and it is for four, which is why I've got four individual little small mould, which I've got there, and which I'm going to batter it first with soft butter. There we are. And then spread some sugar, custard sugar, into it. Sometimes on some souffle you can use little cake breadcrumb. It's to ease the souffle to 
raise and to hold it up as well. So that's the four mold. Now let's go through the all the ingredients. Now you've got an in orange there on which I'm going to reduce the juice and I'm going to get a spoonful which I'm going to use in the mixing of the confectionery cream. With the skin, I'm going to peel it and cut it as a julienne and I'm going to blanch it first, then I'll drain it, a spoon of water and a spoon of sugar with it and cook it until there is no more liquid. Drain it and I've got candied orange. I like. We call it julienne. The little mandarin, well, the mandarin, I washed them first, grated them, and I get that lovely little grated mandarin zest, which is going to be mixed into confectionery cream again. And as far as the segments are concerned, we cut them in small pieces, most of them, but we keep, however, 12 nice little pieces, which we are going to arrange on the top of the souffle when they're cooked. So that's for that, and of course, the Cointreau. It won't be Cointreau on ice, it'd be Cointreau in the souffle. I love the flavor into a souffle. Now, uh, the main ingredient, the confectionery cream. Uh, we've got it there on the bain-marie. It must be warm. It's ready, so logically what I'm doing, as I said, it's to put the grated mandarin into it. The little orange, which has been reduced. Cointreau, which I've measured, that's the Cointreau. And I whisk it nicely. Now, the confectionery cream is ready to receive the white of eggs, so I'm just starting to whisk my white of eggs. Time to put the sugar. I want them firm, but not too firm. Soft pick, in fact. So I stop now. Get the bassin off. Get the confectionery cream onto the working top and mixed around one third. There we are of the white with the whisk first. Then what's left there goes all into the mixing. You can see that they're holding, but they soft pick. So the souffle will rise better. Because if you overwork your white of eggs, you don't get a nice light souffle. Now you take a slotted spoon and you fold it very gently. Don't break it, very gently folding. At that stage, it's ready to mold the souffle. So <coughs> you get your mold there and fill it up halfway in. And you're going to scatter your little mandarin into it. Lovely, the flavor which comes now, as the mixing is nice and warm. Get all the flavor of the Cointreau and mandarin together. There we are. So what you do there, just sprinkle the mandarin. Nicely in the middle. Yeah. And then just pour over just cover what you've got there. To finish your fourth mold. There 
we are just nicely tap them a little